show dogs. These are Victoria's top show dogs parading at the Supreme Dog Star Quest, Victoria's most glamorous dog event. Here we have the finalists being judged and ultimately and a, a winner. It's a great thrill to be invited to compete in an occasion such as this. I know. That's me with my Airedale doing those finishing touches just before the judging. The requirements of each breed are so different. But what makes a show dog? An understanding of your chosen breed? A depth of knowledge of the pedigree and basic genetics, selection of the right puppy and the education of the puppy from a very young age to be able to cope with any situation. It takes a lot of knowledge and dedication to make a show dog in the first place and then take it through to this level of competition. So this production is designed to demonstrate the principles behind the making of a show dog. To understand how to select those characteristics we require to make up our chosen breed of pedigree dog, let's look at the way one single characteristic is transmitted from the parents to the puppies. The study of one characteristic as transmitted by one single pair of genes is called simple genetics. This pair of genes is made up from one single gene from the mother and one single gene from the father. For this example of simple genetics, let us assume that a single gene is totally responsible for a single characteristic. Here, the whole of a puppy's coat to be black or the whole of the puppy's coat to be white. This pair of genes is then expressed in two forms, dominant or recessive. The dominant form of the gene, as the name suggests, dominates that characteristic expressed by that gene. So here, the puppy with a pair of dominant black genes is black. Similarly, the dog with a pair of recessive white genes is white. However, the dog with one dominant black and one recessive white gene appears black, although it carries the recessive white within it. This characteristic is hence hidden, and this dog is called a carrier. It is when these carrier dogs are bred that the hidden characteristic shows up, sometimes quite unexpectedly. Let's look at the mating between two pairs of dogs with all these three possible gene types. This makes six possible matings in all. These are dominant black to dominant black, dominant black to carrier black, Dominant black to recessive white, carrier black to carrier black, carrier black to recessive white, and recessive white to recessive white. The proportion of puppies we can expect from these six possible matings when we obtain one gene from each parent results in genetic possibilities like this. When we make dominant black to dominant black, we have all black genes, so we can expect all the puppies to appear black. When we make dominant black to carrier black, 
with one gene from the mother and one gene from the father, again we expect all the puppies to appear black, but half of these puppies could be carrying the recessive white gene. When we make dominant black to recessive white, all the puppies will appear black, although all the puppies will be carrying the hidden or recessive white gene. When we make carrier black to carrier black, we get a sometimes unexpected result. Three quarters of these puppies could appear black, but half of the puppies could be carrying the recessive white gene. And one puppy could be white. When we make carrier black to recessive white, we could expect half the puppies to be black but carrying a recessive white gene and half the puppies to be white. Lastly, when we make recessive white to recessive white, as there are only recessive white genes from both parents, all the puppies will be white. When you remember that each dog is made up of millions of genes, you can appreciate how complicated the subject of genetics can be. However, principles of selection of all pedigree dogs are based upon this theory of simple genetics. Now let's look at the pedigree. A pedigree shows the dog's family tree, its parents and grandparents, not just a list of names, but real dogs that transmit real dominant and recessive genes. Let's call the bitch whose pedigree I'm about to explain to you Ranger Imaginary Lass. Ranger is my kennel prefix. All dogs and bitches bred by me bear the kennel prefix Ranger. Then there is a chosen name, in this case Imaginary Lass. I shall call her Lassie at home. It's convenient to have a pet name that somehow reflects the registered name, which in this case is Ranger Imaginary Lass. Now let's look at her mother and father. On a pedigree, the father is called a sire. CH dot is the abbreviation for champion, a title for which the dog must qualify at championship shows. The suffix on the end of the name, CDX, is an obedience title, in this case, Companion Dog Excellent. So the confirmation title goes in front of the name and the obedience title behind. The mother is called a dam. In this case, she is also a champion. But having gained her title in another country, in this case New Zealand, we put New Zealand champion NZCH in front of her name and because she was imported into Australia, we put Imp NZ after her name. In the next line on the pedigree, we have the grandparents or grandsires and granddams. And if there is yet another line, these would be the great grandparents. If the dog concerned has a championship title, you would know it resembles the particular breed in the opinion of several qualified confirmation judges and that the dog possesses no mental or physical defects or breed disqualifications. Similarly, an obedience title proves the dog has been trained to a certain level and is therefore of sound temperament. 
Looking at several of the progeny a particular dog or bitch has thrown with other partners gives you an indication of what genes that dog is inclined to transmit, good and bad. This is the real test of selective breeding. Genes rarely compensate. Metaphorically speaking, mating black to white rarely gives shades of grey. You must remember that a pedigree can only say so much. There is no substitute for a deep understanding of your chosen breed. In the next section, I shall show you three different types of matings to explain the corresponding three most commonly used breeding definitions. Correct breeding is a creative art all about the transmitting of desirable characteristics and eliminating the undesirable ones. This represents an outcrossed pedigree. You will have noticed all the names on this pedigree are different. Hence they carry different genes and show different characteristics. So litters from outcrossed matings like this vary tremendously but usually do not bring out those undesirable recessive genes. Now let's look at a line bred mating. Line breeding represents one or more ancestors, usually a grandparent or great grandparent, repeated. This results in a much more even litter. Here we have a pedigree that is line bred to Champion Range Air Grandfather. So Champion Range Air Grandfather is the same grandfather on both the mother's and the father's side. If this common grandparent is known to throw excellent representatives of your chosen breed, this is the best type of mating for pedigree animals. However, it is most important to also establish whether the dog repeated in the pedigree is prone to throw undesirable characteristics as well. This is further shown in our third example, an inbred pedigree. Inbreeding is the mating together of very close relations, like father to daughter or mother to son. Historically, Many of our breeds originated in this way. Done by very experienced dog people, this is how many of our pure breeds originated. Here we have not only Champion Range Air Grandfather as the common grandsire, like we saw in the previous example, but here we also have Champion Range Air Nanny CD as the common grand dam. So this makes Champion Range Air Pretend Dad CDX and New Zealand Champion Air Range Supposed Mum imported from New Zealand full brother and sister, obviously from different litters. Puppies from matings like this can be a success if done by the experts but are more likely to be an absolute heartbreak because of those undesirable recessive characteristics that show up resulting in puppies that are malformed in some way and therefore must be put to sleep. So if you understand the good and bad characteristics of your chosen breed, you have begun to make a show dog.